A couple of things come to mind, which in actual fact um, really are common. Uh, one of them is even though we are instructed to and we believe in breathing and breathing deeply and playing with um, good fresh air supply, we underdo that really often. Even professionals. I mean, if you look in some of the music of players who are really good, there'll be markings for breath, not just for phrasing, but like, don't forget to breathe more deeply because we have a kind of default setting where we under breathe. And learning to breathe deeply and in a relaxed way as if the air was falling into your lungs is a concept I find really helpful working with people. And when they're playing a phrase and it's okay, but not quite good as it should be, and I can see the talent is there, I just say, do it again and take a really big breath this time. And they do, and it's always better. That's one thing. The, another a physical thing is hand position. Hello. You no know, rounded hand, comfortable. Fingertips on the valves. You can play nice and evenly and accurately and rhythmically and cleanly because these tubes have to change length really quickly. And if you're sloppy with the valves and the timing is off, it can make an otherwise really good player sound quite amateurish and inaccurate. And then when you're playing quickly with tonguing involved, it's much easier to coordinate the, the movement of the valve when it's articulate with your articulation than it is otherwise sloppily. I heard a really nice player recently playing like this, but whenever the fast parts would come, they go like this, and then slow parts. In actual fact, this helps the slow parts too, so that's another thing. Uh, the final thing that pops into my mind is, and is not technical, it's open mind, um, an open mindset, open-mindedness perhaps you could say, where when you take a lesson or get an idea, you have to let go of your habits. There are so many habits. We learn to make mistakes. We learn to uh, dread a certain part of a certain piece of music because we've always played it poorly or had a problem or inconsistency. And when someone suggests something that seems a little different, you must try it. And I've always enjoyed that because I realized there are two things that can cause you to have problems playing. Other than, you know, having a bicycle accident or getting punched in the face or something. I mean, two things while you're playing that can cause problems. One is too much pressure, pulling with the, the ring and the left hand where you cut blood flow and things that have a problem. And overblowing, meaning playing too loudly, crassly, and, and to the point where it's distorting your embouchure and making the muscles kind of react in a strange way. It's not just fatigue, it's just, and, and that can produce bad results. Otherwise, you should experiment. If someone says to try playing your horn upside down, try it. You might learn something great. You know why? Because the brain has different areas that light up when you do things differently. Sometimes I have students play left-handed. And they think it's so goofy and funny, and then they start to play better. And then they go back, and it seems so easy. And a little light bulb goes off. So the open-mindedness and the willingness to experiment, or to even experiment on your own, just invent things, sounds on your horn and uh, approaches, is really, really extremely helpful in becoming more comfortable in interfacing with the horn.